Hi, this is another episode of Chat with Chuck, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about word differences between the UK and the US, uh, primarily dealing with food in this episode. Uh, now, I'm not going to cover all of the foods, and I'm not going to cover foods that I think most people already know, such as fries versus uh, chips, uh, chips versus crisps, cookies versus biscuits. These are ones that uh, most people in both countries uh, are aware of. But there are going to be other videos that deal with word differences that are not related to food. So keep an eye out for those. One of the things I've always found interesting about the English language is that it's such a, such a collection of <clears throat> words, languages from other places. You have, you have Latin, Anglo-Saxon, Scandinavian, German. All of these languages came to one place here in England and created the English language. The English language was then scattered throughout the world through the British Empire. These languages, when they left, landed in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, many different places. And as they landed there, as they existed there, they had their own influences. And these influences were, were brought in and created different words, different ways of speaking. The separation of time and distance caused other changes. It's a rather fascinating how all of this happened, that we, so many different countries speak English, but there are differences which I find interesting and is the point of this video. Today I'm going to talk about five words that are used here in England that are predominantly French in origin that are uh, not really used in the United States. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not. Uh, some of these I didn't know until I moved here. Others I had heard of but never used. The first of these is courgette. In the United States, we say zucchini. I'm guessing this has something to do with the fact that zucchinis were not particularly popular in the U.S. until uh, there was massive migration, uh, predominantly from Italy, uh, and zucchinis were brought with them. So the people that migrated to the United States brought their word, their vegetables, their different types of food, and that became the predominant reason why we call courgettes zucchinis. The second word I want to tell you about is an aubergine. An aubergine is an eggplant. Uh, I'm not sure where we took the word eggplant from. It's English, eggplant. Uh, aubergine is French, it's a color. Somewhere in history, we decided to call it uh, an eggplant, and that's what it's predominantly called in the United States. The third one is something that I had never heard of until I moved here, uh, which is dauphinois potatoes. Now, I've seen them. I was watching a television show, and they were making food, and it was, uh, it was very interesting. It looked good. They looked like scalloped potatoes to me, but everyone kept calling them dauphinois potatoes. I looked it up and realized that they are exactly the same thing. Even though Delphinois potatoes are the French origin word, uh, they're made the same way, they taste about the same, uh, and, and I enjoy them very much. The next word deals with a large ham, which we would just call a ham. Uh, you have honey-baked hams, you have all kinds of hams available in the United States. Here they are called gammons. Exactly the same thing, different word. Uh, I don't know the, I know it's a French word. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it means. Probably means ham. The fifth word is a word that I had not heard of ever before. Uh, and that word is mongetou, which is a French word that means snow pea. Now this is one of those words where I mean, unless you speak French or are grown up in the UK, if someone says there's mangetou in this dish, 
spice? Is it a meat? Is it a vegetable? What is it? Well, what it is, is a snow pea. The next thing I'd like to do is put up a picture. It's a bit of a game. I'll put up the picture and you say what pops into your head. What is that? And then I will provide to you the British term, British word, for the same thing. Here's the first one. It is. Now I know you're thinking, most of you are thinking cotton candy. But this is called candy floss. Made the same way, exactly the same stuff. First time I heard candy floss, I was curious. Because candy and floss don't seem like they should go together. But there it is. Next thing up is this, a popsicle. Remember going to the refrigerator and the freezer in the middle of the summer and grabbing one of these out because it's so hot or waiting for the ice cream truck to come down the street, to stop the ice cream man, get a popsicle, a drumstick, something else that you enjoy. Here, popsicles are called ice lollies, like a lollipop. Which, by the way, a lollipop is called a lolly here. So ice lolly. Makes sense. Next on the list is this. It's a jar of molasses. Uh, it's common for used in baking. Here it is called black treacle. One of the things that we tried to do when we, we moved here was to uh, find different things so that we could make recipes, make pies, make different things that require different items. And what you have to do is figure out what's the British equivalent. And even though the name has changed, is it exactly the same thing? So molasses is black treacle. It's like cornstarch is corn flour. It's here. You just have to know what to call it. Powdered sugar is icing sugar. I mean, you can, you can get a lot of things here that you want from, that you're used to in the United States. It will just be in the, uh, it'll be called something different, or it'll be in the international section. Uh, and I have to say that living here in the UK has been much easier to find American type products than when I lived in uh, Denmark. You can get stuff there too, but in the UK, there's a much closer connection between the two countries. So there's many more uh, American style products that you can get here that you can get in the US. So that's definitely an advantage. This next picture is bacon. I know it doesn't look like bacon, but in the UK, this is bacon. Bacon is one of those things, if you want to get into an argument with a Brit, tell them that they don't eat the right bacon. If you want to get into an argument with an American, tell them they don't eat the right bacon. What you need to know is that uh, the bacon that an American is looking for here, they have it, is called streaky bacon. Same thing. Uh, but if you go into a store, if you go into a restaurant, and you have bacon, you're going to get the other bacon, which, which really tastes more like uh, ham. Uh, it tastes like Canadian bacon with a bit of a flubbery tail on the end. But I'm not going to get into an argument about it. If you like British bacon, eat British bacon. If you like American bacon, eat American bacon. It's, it's fine. Although I have had more than one argument with people about which is the better bacon. I think we all know which one's better. The next one on the list is this. This is a roast. Here a roast is usually called a joint. Not a joint. A joint. I believe it's called a joint because most roasts come from joints in an animal, like the shoulder or the hindquarter. 
That would be my guess. Uh, so the first time we went in, you asked for a, a roast. Uh, what you're going to get is a is you asked to ask for a joint. It's a peculiar question. Uh, the thing is that they have something here called a Sunday roast, and I've been to more than one of those. Uh, and it can be chicken or beef or pork. It can be a number of things, but it's roasted and uh, has uh, Yorkshire pudding and a variety of other side dishes. Uh, if you visit the UK or if you move here to live, uh, you should certainly try and find a place that has a good Sunday roast uh, because you'll be able to uh, enjoy the food. Um, and in most cases, the meat that is served will come off a joint. The next thing we have is this. This is a table of desserts. Now desserts uh, are oftentimes called pudding here, or pud. Uh, I did a little research on this, and apparently the social structure, the classes, there was a difference as to who used the word dessert and who used the word pudding. They're actually interchangeable. Uh, if you say dessert, everyone knows what you're talking about. If you say pudding, everyone knows what you're talking about. If someone offers you pudding, take it. Let's find out what kind of pudding it is, but it'll probably be something quite good. Uh, it's a interesting. It's, it's interesting that, that pudding is dessert, and when I was younger, I didn't know that. So there's certainly the... Um, Pink Floyd's song, uh, uh, Another Brick in a Wall album, that talks about you can't have your pudding until you eat your meat. Well, I don't want pudding. Pudding is, I'm not 80 and I'm not 6, so I really want pudding. But here, if you say pudding, they mean dessert. So, you get it. It's not what you're expecting. Next is a rutabaga. Now, rutabaga isn't a commonly used item, but I've included it uh, primarily for one reason, uh, or for two reasons. One, it's called a swede here, not a rutabaga, and it's used in pasties. Pasties is a savory uh, turnover, it's a pastry turnover, it's a thick pastry, filled with all kinds of uh, meat and uh, rutabaga and onions and you can get a lot of different fillings inside of it and they are quite good. They were originally made for coal miners because they have a very thick layer of pastry around the edge. So coal miners, they'd make them, they'd be given to coal miners, coal miners would hold on to it by the thick pastry part, eat out all the center and then toss the rest of it because they had, you know, had coal hands um, so they could eat without having to go anywhere else. Um, they're available throughout the country. Find a good place that has them. They're, they're quite delicious. Uh, they have a variety of uh, fillings and uh, I strongly suggest you try one uh, because they're, they're very traditional here and they're quite good. <clears throat> Next on the list is this, cilantro. Here it's called coriander. Now what's interesting is in the United States we call it cilantro, but the seeds from that plant, the coriander plant, uh, we call coriander seeds. So. There's, there's a difference. So when I would watch things on TV or hear people talk about coriander, I would immediately think of coriander seeds. But what they meant was cilantro. So these are, these are adjustments that you have to make and understand. Um, there will be a future video on pronunciation. That's probably going to be a multiple video also because there's a lot of pronunciation differences. Uh, but in this case, you have cilantro, coriander, and coriander seeds. 
This next one is jelly. Here it's called jelly, which is a bit confusing because we have the word jelly also, but it means something different. So when you're having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, in the UK, they will almost always say a peanut butter and jam sandwich because who really wants a peanut butter and jello sandwich? That's wrong. Um, we have jelly, we have jam, uh, and I've had more than one conversation with Brits about the difference between jelly and jam. Uh, it's not that hard, um, but when they hear jelly, they think jello. The next one I have is this, porridge. Looks like oatmeal to me, but the uh, difference between oatmeal and porridge is uh, nothing. When I was younger, I used to think that porridge was a, a runnier form of oatmeal, but uh, I've now learned that Oatmeal and porridge are exactly the same thing. And uh, if you go into the store and look for oatmeal, you won't find it. Uh, you'll find porridge. The last thing I wanted to show you today was this. This is Ribena. This is a brand name. And it is uh, a concentrated fruit drink. It's consumed mostly by children, though some adults do drink it. Uh, this is pineapple and passion fruit. I believe the most common is black currant. Uh, what you need to know is that if you go to somebody's house, particularly if you have children, and you and they offer a drink, they will ask you or anybody if you want. Uh, a beer or wine, Coke, water, and we'll probably ask your kids if you want squash. I'm not exactly sure why it's called squash. I'm assuming because you take fruit and you squash it to get the juice out and it's called squash. Uh, if that's the reason, I, I get it. Although when I think squash, I think of a vegetable. But here it's squash, and it's, it's a word that's used quite a bit. I mean, that's what they mean. So anyway, I hope, you th I hope that you found this uh, video helpful uh, and enjoyable. I ask that you subscribe and share and like this. Please provide any comments you may have on topics or subjects you'd like me to, to address. Uh, I have a number of things lined up to talk about, but if there's enough interest in a particular issue, I'll be happy to uh, focus on that and provide what information I can. Uh, until next time, goodbye and thank you very much.